Okay. Uh, it really is time to dispel a lot of the BS. And there is more enormous BS. Um, about uh, ISO and cameras than, you know, it, it's... Uh, it, it's amazing. There, I think there was recently a poll done of Irish people, and there's like an enormous number of them that still believe in leprechauns. <laughs> I don't know if that poll was taken when they were drunk. They're always drunk. <laughs> that people think that ISO is either sensitivity or exposure. Every time a new camera rolls out, people go, and this is really, really stupid. Okay, this is really stupid. They say, How great is the low IS, the high ISO performance on that camera? And, uh, you know, it's a valid question. It depends on how the camera was weighted. Um, you know, the micro lenses, the actual photo sites, whether they're large or smaller. G over T is uh, something that's inescapable, inescapable by any camera company, whether it's Canon, Nikon, Fuji, anybody else. Larger photo sites have better intertonal gain on uh, some of the uh, lower EV exposures, given the exact same uh, G over T gain over time, which has to do with shutter and aperture. And also, of course, the T-stop of the lens. Whatever the aperture is, is not exactly the T-stop. The transmittive power of the lens. So, uh, 50 millimeter at f11 is not equal to a 50 millimeter at f11. Well, sure it is. 50 at f11 is a 50 at f... No, it's not. Uh, coatings, lens elements, uh, how many there are. That is not the T-stop of the lens. You can have two identical 50 millimeters, and they both have different transmissive powers at 50 millimeters, say it's a prime lens, of course they're 50 millimeters, at f8 or f11 or whatever the hell the aperture is. Because f-stop is not a t-stop. So we have a gain. We have three native gains. We have uh, the aperture, we have the shutter speed, and then we have the native gain of the sensor. Once the camera's made, that's it. Large photo sites versus small photo sites, you got the advantages and disadvantages of both. Larger photo sites are awesome uh, for portraiture because the intertonal gain is incredible. You have large photo sites given the exact same G over T gain over time. Uh, you have a better transmission of light. You have better intertonal uh, capture and rendering of the image. All things being equal, an awesome lens, you know, the same awesome lens on a DX versus an FX. Um, what people don't realize is that ISO has nothing to do with exposure or sensitivity. A lot of people were reporting it's like, I didn't believe you on ISO. I even had one guy fight with me. Fight, 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 fight. And to his credit, he eventually changed. Like, you know, I looked up a thousand sources and you're right. I was wrong. He even made a video fighting with me. He's like, this guy is, that dude freaks an idiot. He uh, says that ISO is not exposure, is not sensitivity. And he's wrong. A bunch of people commented on his videos like, you're right, you're right. I think that fat that dude's an idiot. ISO is part of the exposure triangle. Well, ISO has nothing to do, not a damn thing to do with exposure. ISO lets you screw with exposure. You can't nail it, you know, you don't have a tripod, and you know, you can't hand hold it at one tenth of a second, which most people can't, and you're going to crank up your ISO. ISO is a crutch. It's a necessary crutch. Uh, it is the case, however, you have, depending on the camera, you know, four, five, sometimes even six stops of latitude before you encounter issues that you could glue the ISO dial, if it had a dial on this camera, for example, glue the ISO dial down at whatever the base ISO is, 200, 100, whatever it is, 200 on a Fuji, 100 on most Nikons, and then raise it up and post. Raise it. All these people are reporting, I did exactly what you said. I did a shot underexposed at ISO 100, and then a shot perfectly exposed at, uh, I, at uh, ISO 640. And when I raised it in post, the shot at ISO 100 looked better. It looked dark as hell on the back of my LCD screen. All of this stuff can be done in post. And not only that, it can be done a lot better using noise reduction software like Denoise Projects or Topaz uh, denoising a plug-in uh, for denoising the shot. See, a camera, if you're shooting off like a continuous burst or even single shot, it is how much signal processing can be done within a really, really short period of time but are you, any, if anybody is delusional enough to think, whether it's an Icon D5 or an Icon D810, that any of these cameras, the, the flagship Canon, they can do a better job than my damn computer with a quad-core processor and 32 gig of RAM running a hardcore denoise application, which takes several seconds to process the image, even with that kind of RAM and processing power. And it will eliminate, eliminate out an enormous amount of noise. So, 
the difference is is that what people don't understand is like on this uh, you know a high ISO performing Nikon D5, which I, which actually has horrible low ISO performance due to the fact of how it's weighted. This camera, at its very very best, the pinnacle of what it does, or even the Canon, is total and absolute crap. Total and absolute hideous insane crap compared to what a, a denoise application can do in your computer. Total crap. So when people say, well, how good is the high ISO performance on that camera? What they're really saying is that I'm a lazy SOB and I don't like spending four extra seconds on my computer denoising a high ISO uh, image. Because I can make an image out of any Nikon look way better than the same ISO out of this Nikon D5. Well, no, it looks a lot better out of this. And out of the camera it does, but what I can do with it in post, I can do a much better job. The same image, same lens, same aperture, same shutter speed, out of this camera in post than, this can, than the, the Nikon D5 can, or any camera, can do in camera. What people don't realize is that ISO is signal processing. The uh, noise processing is uh, the uh, AD converter, the SNR firmware, and how the camera, after the image is captured on the sensor, is processed. You see, all these high ISOs, they don't have a damn thing to do with light. They have nothing to do with light at all. Even a lot of professional photographers, uh, hardcore ones, ones that are really, really well respected, they'll say, well, I'm up at ISO 100,000 or something, and this is definitely where digital processing occurs at. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Every level of ISO is digital processing. It is applied gain. It is signal processing. Signal processing. Doesn't have a damn thing to do with the aperture. Doesn't have a damn thing to do with the shutter. Doesn't have a damn thing to do with the luminal density over a period of time, G over T, that hits that sensor. It has to do with everything after it. How the signal is processed. You know, every ISO and every camera doesn't have a damn thing to do with light. Nothing! Nothing. If you could glue the shutter uh, and aperture at a fixed point, say ISO, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, f-stop of 4 and shutter speed at uh, 1 uh, one one hundredth of a second. f4, 1 one hundred. Whatever you shoot, it's f4, 1 one hundred. You know, you never want to blow out the highlights, obviously so. Never. You know, that creates an issue. You know, you can recover the shadows to an extent, but you got blown highlights, you got an issue. Everything else is signal processing. You know, it has nothing to do with light. You got too much light, you got an issue. We all know about overexposure. We're not talking about overexposure. We're talking about performance at a given ISO. And that can be done in your software application. And it can be done a lot, lot better than any camera on earth can do it. Because the Nikon D5 and every camera is designed to process that signal from that image ultra, ultra, ultra fast. And it can never do one one hundredth of a good of a job as the application that is on your computer. And if you don't understand that, you don't understand anything. Because that is a fact. There's nobody that's going to post the comment below saying, that's wrong. No, it's not wrong. It's 100% right. High ISO performance doesn't mean jack crap, except for someone that's lazy and wants the camera to do it itself. And I understand that. I mean, I'm lazy too. I want the camera to do everything, but <laughs> the camera can't do one hundredth one one hundredth of good of a job as I can on the computer. It can't do it. So when people talk about high ISO performance, what they're doing is they're talking about a debug feature on the camera and how it actually processes the signal. ISO is not sensitivity, it's not exposure, and ISO doesn't have a damn thing to do with light. It is signal processing. Signal processing. And that has nothing to do with the aperture, nothing to do with the lens, nothing to do with the shutter. It doesn't have a damn thing to do with the sensor either. It has to do with all that other crap that 90% of the camera... 90% of what is in this camera is not a sensor. It is 80 converters, SNR firmware, the bus, the power supply, the buffer, you know. <laughs> what the hell do you think? You take apart an Icon DSLR, any DSLR, it's just jam-packed. And, uh, you know, 90% of that is, is not the sensor. It's not the shutter either. It's all that other stuff to process the image. And uh, the point is, is that rather than spend $6,500 on this camera, you can buy an Icon D750 and blow the piss out of this camera by using far, 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 far superior uh, noise and signal processing 
in the application on your computer than exists in the side this extremely expensive camera. So you're paying ultimately about $4,000 for signal processing that you can do with a $30 application on your computer. Hopefully it's a Macintosh. <laughs> and that is a fact. Deny it, you cannot.